there are strange things out there that seem to have no explanation. Sometimes they're conjured up by the darkest corners of our subconscious. But on occasion, they dwell beyond the confines of our imagination. They may come from another realm, out of the sky, or from beyond the grave. Once they reach out from beyond the veil, the line between dreams and reality fades. It's our job to investigate these reports and compile the Virginia Paranormal Case Files. When strange sounds emerge from the night and an invisible hand reaches out of the darkness, it may cause one to wonder what unseen entities lurk about the house after sunset. In certain situations, it seems that the sounds present in the environment during a traumatic event have been burned into the atmosphere as residual audio, while the entity itself may very well be intelligent. Such seems to be the case at a home in Mechanicsville, Virginia, where a family reports hearing the clinking of glasses, low chatter, and footsteps echoing down the hallway at night, perhaps the residual haunting of a party frozen in time. However, there appeared to be something more than residual spirits in the house when one of the residents was physically contacted by an invisible force. The team at Virginia Paranormal Investigations was called to take the case. After interviewing the residents, the team proceeded with a baseline sweep of the location. The baseline involves walking through the entire house, checking the EMF levels, ambient temperature, and taking photographs from every angle. The baseline readings are compared to any fluctuations that may occur throughout the course of the investigation. So, so whenever I watch the X-Files, I always wonder why they don't just turn the lights on. But it doesn't make a good show when you do that. Sometimes I check furniture. Sometimes the furniture is on. <laughs> wow. Really good looking guy right in there. Looks like a really good place to watch hockey. Okay. Awesome. We did notice one thing upstairs is when you are stepping around in this room, you'll hear cracks um, in a different area of the room than where you're actually stepping. So that is something we wanted to make note of as well. The team noticed that when weight was applied to a floorboard, it would creak approximately two to four feet away from the point of contact. Scott decided to lay in the bed to see if movement on the bed could simulate the sound of footsteps reported in the bedroom. Scott's going to lay in this bed in here and he's going to um, move around a little bit for us and Jeff and I are going to see if we can hear any noises in the opposite room because it was stated that um, when the sun is sleeping at night and he shifts um, in bed you can hear creaks like someone's walking around up here. I don't know, she said it was sounded more like, you know, footsteps. It sounded like, it's because she said it sounded like he was getting out of bed and right. coming to the door. But any sounds yeah. that you hear doesn't sound, no. like, especially with the fan going at night. Right. There's yeah. no way it would sound like someone's getting out of bed. And no, and she door. said she could hear, the, like, the footsteps and the floor creaking because, you know, yeah. it creaks in a couple of places here. So, you, you know, she said it was more there. like that, that like, like, a, like anybody, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it didn't sound like it was... It would take more weight to make that much noise. It would. Mm. Or something. Yeah, it's got, <laughs> you got creakiness right here, right inside the doorway. And Scott was laying in bed, and I was in there listening for any sounds. Um, I didn't notice anything, um, like, prominent, um, especially with the um, ceiling fan going on in that bedroom. It didn't sound loud enough for someone to be getting out of bed and walking to the door. It sounded like very faint cracks, um, but nothing more than that. So we're in the upstairs bedroom that belongs to the grandson, and in the entire upstairs area, the customers complain that they are always hearing footsteps. It sounds like somebody is moving around up here, but particularly in this room here. So um, we're going to start out in here and see if we can, um, we run in the periscope, we're going to run a spirit box, and um, see if we can pick up anything and figure out where these phantom footsteps are coming from.
So we want to know who's here with us right now. Uh, my name is Linda. I'm Scott. I'm Bill. We're not here to harm you. We don't want to make you go away. We just want to find out who you are and, and why you're here. The family that's here hears you walking around in the room here at night, sometimes during the day. Did this used to be your room? Do you like to mess with his keyboard? Because of the lights, maybe? So we are going to try something a little bit different. We've turned off the loud noisy box. Um, we are going to go to an EVP session. We have our digital voice recorder here. That's the little white box that you see. Um, if you can come near that box and speak into it, we might be able to hear your voice. Can you try saying your name now? There's a keyboard over here that lights up when you touch it. Can you, uh, can you, can you do that? That's pretty cool. I kind of want my keyboards, right? Yeah, they said that, that they have heard the keys clicking, but they've come in and haven't found a cat in hmm. here. Oh, okay. So I guess they, they consider that. Yeah, you know, okay. When they hear something, but. Haven't they also heard the door being like messed with mm -hmm. by one of the, it sounds like a cat hitting it, but it's... Yeah, they said that when the door is shut, it sounds like something's bumping, bumping the door. Why don't you shut the door behind you and see if we can... Oh, I'll come up here. Well, I mean, you could come in, okay, but yeah, let's see if we can... <laughs> So we closed the door. Can you uh, can you bump the door? Can you, can you make that sound that you've made before? So we're going to try a little experiment. What we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to close all of the upstairs bedroom doors. And the bedroom door that they say they hear kind of bumping back and forth a lot as if there's a cat in there trying to get out. Um, we're going to see if maybe opening or shutting one of these upper bedroom doors really quick makes a difference and try to kind of re simulates that sound. Do you want us to shut the door? Yes, if you would shut that door. Nothing. I tried opening and shutting, tried to do it pretty quick, mm -hmm. you know, pretty forcefully, and it didn't make this door bump at all so um, of course there are other windows upstairs that are open mm -hmm. in some of the other bedrooms so mm -hmm. I don't know if that could make a difference but I don't know sure, yeah. not sure what the reason for that is but it mm -hmm. it is they just do complain about this door bumping and this is the only one that seems like that that's really kind of loose and would wobble while it's shut so so right here in the bedroom, this is the master bedroom, um, the, the customers often complain about hearing each other's voices being called. Uh, the mother will hear the daughter's voice calling her and vice versa. And when they get up to investigate and find out who, what they want, um, the other one is actually asleep. So um, it can't be somebody calling, the, calling their names. Um, they've also heard other voices throughout the house as well. Just recently one of them said yes, kind of in a, in a very clear voice. So we're going to try an EVP session in here and see if we can um, get something to speak to us. So we do have an open window, which I believe I'm going to shut. Looks like going to oh. Oh. 
Yeah, there's a highway nearby too. Yeah. Is that what that noise is? Yeah, there's that constant yeah. sort of rumble. So we want to know if you can speak to us, come and talk to us. You don't have to be afraid of us. We're not here to hurt you. We just want to find out who you are. Was this your house at one time? Perhaps back in the late 80s, early 90s? What is your name? What is your favorite thing about this house? Do you have any issues with anybody else living in this house? So we're in the little hallway upstairs that kind of connects all of the bedrooms and off of this hallway there's a bathroom and some of the customers complain that they hear what sounds like a party going on in the bathroom upstairs at night. Um, she said it sounds like, like glasses kind of chinking together. She hears voices. She hears like even the swooshing of, of evening gowns and dresses, you know. Um, so we're probably going to do a little bit in the bathroom here and try to figure out exactly what's going on. Now at another time um, she was in the bathroom and she felt like something had pushed her, some sort of force had pushed her in the stomach and it caused her to fall back into the bathtub. She was caught by the shower curtain, thank goodness, because she might have hurt herself if not, but um, it bent the shower curtain rod when she fell against the shower curtain. So. Um, whatever it was, was um, enough to, you know, make her fall back. She said she's had these, these fainting spells before, but, you know, when you faint, you always kind of collapse to the floor, you know, you don't, like, go flying back. So um, we're going to see if we can um, figure out exactly what might cause that. All right, we are standing in the bathroom. Uh, we hear that there's noises and party sounds coming from out of the bathroom. Can you make those sounds for us, or say who you are? Oh, that's pretty cool. Does that, that sound like a help? Yeah. Like help. Why do you need help? I'm hitting the door. Something about a door? I'm hitting. I'm hitting in the door. I'm, what did you hear? I heard him. Yeah, so like hidden, hidden behind the door or something. Oh, that's creepy. What door are we talking about? There's something in this closet. I didn't know you were saying that. Scott or Scott? Do what? Sound like Scott? Like Scott or Scott? Oh. You want to party with Scott? All right. <laughs> what was in this closet door? Can you tell us what you're laughing? There's material. I didn't, there was like a couple of syllables, Matero or something at the very end. What did you say? Madero? Madero? Um, yeah. So we're downstairs in the dining room and this is um, of the approximate area where one of the clients had heard a whisper or a voice that came through that said yes. So um, we are going to come down here and um, we're very close to the kitchen where the clients have claimed that they've been touched on the shoulder a couple of times. So we're going to see if what we can pick up down here. So uh, we're here in the dining room. We came to a different area to see if we may, we may be able to hear your voice or talk to you more. Um, we have this thing on the table here, this black box. And uh, if you come near that, it may light up. There's different colored lights on it. So we wanted to see if perhaps 
you could come near that, touch it, make it light up, just to let us know you're here. This thing is called a K2 meter. Can you try to touch that? It's not going to hurt you. How do you feel about this room? It sounds like you might have said your last name upstairs. Can you tell us your first name? We have this recorder going. We might be able to hear it. So what we're doing is we're going to send Scott upstairs and he's going to lay down on the floor of the bathroom and he's going to like pretend he's dead. Um, and this is kind of just a theory or thought that we had. Um, he's going to take the digital voice recorder with him and just see if he can pick up some disembodied voices while he's up there. Um, and maybe one of us will come in and pretend that like we're coming in to check on him as if he might have fallen out of the bathtub and hurt himself. Um, and we'll open the door and, you know, bang into him a couple of times. The team determined that there was a possibility that an accident occurred in the bathroom where the client was pushed and sounds of a party replay through the night. Scott decided to recreate the possible scene to see if it would invoke any activity. Yeah, lay down like towards, with your head towards the closed door here, and then maybe like a foot up on the edge of the tub. If you're in the shower, theoretically speaking. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you're kind of drunk, you finish the shower, mm -hmm. reaching for a towel. Yep, that's trip. right. Trip. Yep. That Why was not? easy. Easy. Or whichever. Ooh. Maybe if this was even open, or this was open, you could hit your head on the corner, get oh, knocked out yeah. pretty badly. That's true, Maybe. yeah. Or um, at yeah. this corner, get knocked out pretty badly. Yep. And then, yeah. Yep, um, there we go. That's and it. Then, yeah. But uh, I don't know about the being stuck part. Well, you can maybe get up way up here. Yeah. Because if you were really reaching for a towel. Yeah, if you, yeah. <laughs> uh, you didn't see my butt crack, did you? No. Oh, okay. I panned up above it. Oh, thanks. Oh, put a big black mark over it. <laughs> Blur it out. <laughs> Blur it out. Yeah, see, I'm kind of thinking maybe he was laying on his right side like that. But he, he might have even been closer to the wall. Like, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. You know. Yeah. Yeah. That's a pretty hard corner there. It, yeah. If you hit that, or... But you might have been right. You might have hit the door, the, the edge of the door. <clears throat> and if it does close shut, he wouldn't yeah. be able to reach it. No. So he could be stuck. Yeah. If he couldn't get up. Did you die on the floor like this? I guess it's still recording. Yeah, it should be. So we're back to talk to you. Scott is here laying on the floor. It sounds like maybe you fell out of the tub when you were drunk. Is that what happened? Can you tell us your first name? Yeah, yeah. it does sound like Sean. What is that? So the first place we went to investigate was upstairs in the son's room. And we actually got quite a few names that came through when we were up there running a spirit box session. Uh, we were rather surprised by the number of names that we kept hearing coming through the spirit box. Now the first one is this clip here. So the first part of that was relatively clear. I'm Freddy. The last part, Alexander, not quite so clear, but still clear enough for us to believe that that's what it said. Now the next clip came just a few minutes later 
And this one is a little bit hard to hear because at the very beginning it sounds like a different voice than it does at the very end. To us, this one sounds like it says Gustavo and then a few seconds later, Janet's boyfriend. <laughs> now, of course, we don't know who Janet is. We don't know who Gustavo is. But all of these people seem to be hanging out in this, this boy's bedroom. Now, the third one that we had that came through, again, was another name, but this time it was another full name. It sounded like it said Eleanor Strictly. Eleanor Strictly. So as you can see, a lot of names came through during the spirit box session up in Sun's bedroom. Now, we also did an EVP session, and we didn't get anything off of that. We also ran the periscope, and there was no movement at all on that. So it seems like whatever it was really decided that, that using the spirit box was the best method. Now when we moved into the bathroom and started investigating there, we started getting another volley of responses that were quite clear, and we were very surprised by how clear they were, how easy to understand they were. The first one came just a few seconds into our spirit box session, and it sounds like a whisper that says, help me. Now, naturally, we, our next question was, why do you need help? What is it that you need help with? And the response that came immediately after that was bad stomach. Now, a short while later, we got a name that came through, and we were asking at the time, what's your name? Can you tell us your name? And the response that came through sounded like Mark Matero. Mark Matero. Now, during this time, Scott, who was one of our investigators, was standing in the bathtub, and he was theorizing as to what may have happened on that evening. And he was talking about reaching into the linen closet from inside the shower trying to reach for a towel. Now we we started asking questions relating to that to see if perhaps that might be what what happened on that evening and of course we asked what is it about this linen closet is there something in there that we need to see and the response that came through was towel. What is it about that closet? Is there something about that closet? That... So of course we kind of questioned what would have happened. Was there some accident that occurred because of this reaching for the towel? Uh, and and in, in our line of questioning, we ended up getting the word drunk. Okay. Drunk. So it was sort of obvious that what may have happened in that, in that bathroom that night was someone came home drunk from a party, uh, reached into the linen closet to get a towel, and they very could, well could have slipped in the bathtub and fallen out of it and perhaps hit their head and passed away. Of course, this is all theory, but when we asked at the very end of the spirit box session, is that what happened, a very faint, of course, had ended up coming through. So it's really anyone's guess, but the responses we were very surprised by because they were so clear and so quick in the response that it's really kind of unique to be able to get that sort of evidence.